Hello, welcome, welcome. Let me do my settings. Um, hello, welcome everybody. Welcome to another Watch Me Wednesday. Um, I have not been organised enough today to get all the information in the description box. Um, however, if you're watching this on YouTube, you will have no idea um, what I'm talking about because it, all the description will be there. And if you're watching it as a replay on Facebook, you won't know either because it will be there so as well. So I will um, upload and edit all the descriptions with all the links that I will talk about um, later. But for those of you who don't know and I've popped up on your Facebook feed or you've come across me on YouTube, then this is my name. My name is Natalie O'Shea. I am the proud owner of the Carb Making Academy and as the name suggests, I'm here to help you make handmade cards. Now, everything that I use in the cards, including what I've used today, um, are available from um, a company called Stamping Up. You can only buy Stamping Up through a Stamping Up representative, if you like, demonstrator as we're called. Um, and so there on the screen, www.natalieoshea.stampingup.net anything that you see that you fancy and you want to go and buy or find out a bit more about um, you can log on there and off you go but let's do this if you're interested in finding out more about me and the card making academy um, you can go to www.thecardmakingacademy.co.uk you will find my blog classes card club uh, courses and all sorts of information on there and um, so if you are new to card making then go and have a look over there there's lots of helpful information um, that can help you with the overwhelm that is the world of card making when you get going so hi Katie morning and um, so let's kind of get on with what we have today and um, so every Wednesday I come live on my Facebook um, page if you don't already subscribe or follow me then hit the follow button and Facebook will let you know when I've been when I go live and if you're watching on YouTube then hit subscribe as well please I would love um, to get my subscribers up so that I can do YouTube lives as well as Facebook lives um, and I'm a, a still a way to go for that yet so go on if you don't subscribe go over and hit it now or if you're watching on YouTube hit that subscribe button Anyway, what should we do today? So I'm still continuing on my trend of snails. <laughs> I do love the snails. Um, so we will be making a card with snails. I've got lots of snail cards to show you. Um, I did promise last week, I was, <laughs> it was my aim to start doing Saturday, or I said end of week, because I didn't know if I was gonna do it Friday or Saturday, but I have now decided they're gonna be Saturdays. Um, so video uploads as well. So again, a new video every Saturday will be uploaded on YouTube and it will be shared across my social media platforms. Um, but I got a bit behind. I got a bit distracted on Friday when I was supposed to be making it. It's like, it's fine, it's fine. I've got plenty of time, I'll just do it on Saturday. Um, and then time ran away with me Saturday when my husband decided he wanted me to wipe a laptop um, and that took me a couple of hours and then my day kind of went. And then I went and had my COVID jab. Um, and that was fine until the next day. Oh my goodness, um, I felt like I had been hit by a bus. Um, now I actually have fibromyalgia. It's not something I shout about um, and I try to ignore it. I try to pretend I don't have it and everything's okay. Um, so I think, because <laughs> part of me was like, I'm not entirely sure why I've been called early. Uh, but everyone was like, it's probably because of fibromyalgia. Um, and I'm like, oh, right, yes, but I suppose so, because as I say, I try and forget it. But oh my goodness, it was a bad fibro day the next day. Um, or that's what it felt like. But it actually, I've had flu once in my life. And I think if you've got flu, if you've ever had flu, then you only have flu when you say you've got flu. And flu is you crawl across the floor because you can't even stand up to, to move from the bed to the toilet and that's it. F for a wee, I wasn't thinking anything else. Um, but yeah, you can't walk, you just stay in bed and everything. And it literally, I felt like that. And that's not to put you off because I'm just like, I'm absolutely for it. I was fine. The next day I was absolutely fine, but Sunday I did take it easy. Um, so I have my next jab in three months time and thankfully it's a Saturday again so I can do a Sunday. So everyone's commenting on the curls, I know. So this, <laughs> I thought I'd treat you to my curls. So this is actually my natural hair. So every day I straighten my hair and pretty much have done for, oh God, 20 odd years. Um, because it's always the case, isn't it? If you have curls, you want straight hair, and if you have straight hair, you want curls. Um, but because because it's grown a little bit over lockdown, I've kind of decided to see how 
long it would be to have my curls and I'm kind of you know, my curls used to be like down here I mean I was a proper 80s chick I didn't need the perm I had it all there anyway so yeah so this is my curly curly hair <laughs> naturally but I thought you know this week I've just decided I'm going there so thanks for noticing everyone but yeah ringlet curls it's me I can't you can't hear yeah, look at it <laughs> But I sit there and iron my hair every day. But anyway, we're off topic a little bit. But yes, that's my curls, curls this week. Um, and as I say, if I can grow it down to here, <laughs> my intention, my intention was about a year. Well, no, about six months before lockdown started, so about eighteen months ago, um, we were supposed to be going on a trip of a lifetime to Hawaii, and I thought. I know my hair in temperatures like that and hum humidity like that. It's just going to go zing. So I thought, right, I'm going to grow it a bit longer. So I started growing my hair about six months before lockdown. Um, it's so that I can actually either tie it back or that if it went curly, it would, you know, it wouldn't be up here because <laughs> my hair was only down here. So that's it. So I'm kind of growing it a little bit now. Well, I have grown it for 18 months and um, yeah, I might keep it. My husband likes curls. I had curls when I met him. The only thing is, if you're too grey, <laughs> it shows there. Anyway, I'm so distracted by that. But there you go, that's the story of my curls. Um, and if you're new to my channel, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's nothing about card making at all, but there you go, a little bit about my life. Um, so, what have I got to tell you about today and show you today? Um, so the Butterfly Bokeh Brilliant set is still live, and in fact, um, I have video, so this, I did video the Saturday video last Saturday, I just didn't get a chance to share it or anything and I've nearly beat myself up and I was going to do it Monday and I just thought no, I'm just going to do it next Saturday. So I'm going to give you a sneak peek of, which way have I got to go, that way, no that way, that's the card I've made on the video that I will share this Saturday and um, so this is a butterfly bouquet and I've actually as you can see made it into a Mother's Day card and um, I had another one which had happy birthday or hello on I can't remember now um, but I've kept this one out because this is my Mother's Day card from my mother she won't, she doesn't watch so it's fine <laughs> she won't get a surprise or anything like that um, so yeah so if you want to see how to make that card you'll need to see my video on um, Saturday. But that uses the Butterfly Brilliance um, set. So let, in fact, let's do, I've got a grotty old um, piece of paper because I've just been working on today's card. But let me just remind you, that's the Butterfly Brilliance stamp. It's one stamp, because look, I've got it really there, ready for my next video. Um, it's one stamp like that on my Stamparatus. Some people are buying two and cutting them up. You can cut them up. And in fact, I've cut one of my snail stamps up today as well. Um, look at me, rock and roll. Um, but that's it. So it stamps all in one go. And then you get the dies as well. I mean, I've shown you this the last few weeks. So I'm not going to say too much. But in case anyone hasn't seen it. <coughs> you get that die which cuts all those out together. And then all these beautiful skeleton dies. So that's what those are. So those... Oh, hang on. No point in holding it up in front of me anymore. You can't see. So I've, I've used dies to cut out these butterflies, but you could use scissors. And then look, don't, look at that. They're up. How beautiful. Can you see that? Let's do that. Those skeleton dies. I've just done those in vellum. They're beautiful. <laughs> They're beautiful. I love them. Um, who doesn't like a skeleton butterfly, especially in vellum? Um, so yeah, so you get dies as well. So you get the stamp set. Um, or you can get the stamp set, you can get the dies. As always, if you buy them together, we give you 10% off. Um, and then we've got some pattern paper. And I keep, I, I've put the 12 by 12 wood effect paper to one side, and I keep forgetting about it. Um, but you get this 6 by 6 paper too, so a quick flick through that. It's obviously beautiful. Butterfly designs, it's all double-sided. Oh, that won't be. And this piece... That big die that cuts out all those, cuts those out as well, which is what they are. If you thought I was clever and I'd coloured all those in, no, it's just pattern paper cut out. Um, always the easy route if you can. So I've used a lot of those. I've cut about six of those sheets out, um, but it cuts one, two, three, four, five, six, exactly the same. Clever, clever, clever stamping up. Um, but there we go, it's 6 by 6 paper as well. The 6 by 6 paper is only going to be available um, either while stocks last or be 
for the 3rd of May. Um, but this set actually is a early release from the annual catalogue, which also goes live the 3rd or 4th of May. I want to say 3rd. Um, so that's it. So that that's so the videos that I'm sharing this month in Saturday are there's three there'll be three now, not four. Um, we'll be sharing that set. And as I said, that was your sneaky peek Hello! Um, of what Saturdays will be. But we're all about the snails today. So I'm bringing in, I'll give you the, the quick sneaky peek of, um, so I run a monthly card club. You can subscribe um, monthly, as the name suggests. There's no minimum commitment, so you don't have to subscribe for a minimum of three months or six months or a year. Um, so you can subscribe for £25 a month. And if you do carry on for six consecutive months, I'll give you £25 to spend of your choice out of the current catalogue. So, um, so that there's a perk for obviously staying. Not only do you get a reduced cost, £25 per month, um, but you get that bonus at the end of six consecutive months as well. But you can, if you love this kit, you can sign up for a one-off kit as well. And as I say, I will put those details in the, um, in the description when I all edit all this this afternoon. Um, but yes, yeah, so you can sign up for a one-off box if you're just like, well, I don't want to subscribe, but actually I just love this this set, so I want to want all the stuff to make it. Um, you can do that. Or if you already have the snail, snail bits and you just want the PDF and the videos of how to make them, um, then you can access those as well. So there's three different options now for Card Club. But you need to sign up by the 14th, which is Sunday, isn't it? It's Sunday, yes. So you need to sign up by Sunday if you want this month's card club. So this was my sneaky pick. I, I love this. I know I love this. I did give more than a sneaky peek. So you're getting the pattern papers. You're getting um, the twine. You're getting these cute little resin hearts. These die cut pieces here are done for you. Um, the only thing it doesn't include are the stamps or the dies, but you can add those on for a discount as well, actually, for my card club members. Um, instead of like £41, they get the, the bundle for like 37 so it's worth it. Um, so that's one card. There's another card. Just sneak Oh, I've, I, I, you can't see. I have, I have, oh, don't, come on. There we go, back in the room. <laughs> so that one there, that one there, that one there. There we go, that's it. That's my sneak peek of card clubs so if you like the look of those cards they're very pattern papery quite a lot of pattern paper used in those and i did share last week we did these three cards here so this was to kind of show that the set you could do clean and simple as well so if you didn't join me for that you can go back and um, if you're watching on youtube that's probably the quickest way to find it it'll be the video before this one um, but to show you that you could do clean and simple as well as crazy pattern paper so depending on what your style is, you can do either with those. I loved those. Um, I did give you more sneaky peeks, I think. Did I show you these or not? I can't remember. Um, but here's another couple of cards there um, using the same set, just with the toadstools and some blending and some spritzing and splashing. Then, look at these. So watercolouring, so just using some of the ink and using watercolour. Um, to give it some more colour, as the name suggests. So, walls of these letters. You've got mail. Snail mail. Don't send so much snail mail anymore, do we, as, as we do emails. And then here's another set that's more pattern paper and a bit of a shaker card there as well. Whoop. So, there's three more, which I say, a bit more pattern papery. So, they're not in the card club, but they're just to give you some ideas of what you can do with this snail set. Right. Okay, let's have a look. Lovely card, Natalie. Thanks, Paula. Uh, <laughs> Katie, you have to get the butterflies. I sat there and thought, oh, I've got butterflies. I don't need more butterflies. But I say that with flowers as well. Um, so butterflies and the snails are coming Friday. Yay, Paula! <laughs> I think it has to be done. It's all about, all about wildlife at the moment. Um, so I did share last week that the card we're going to make this week is this Super Andy Warhol inspired, which is why you can see this, um, this card here. Because I was just, I was, I was just practicing before I did it. And I'll show you the cock-ups that I made as well. Um, but we're going to be making this card here. So should we just get on with it? Because we're already 15 minutes. God, I do talk. Um, <laughs> so, 
Um, I will say this card was actually originally made by um, one Carrie in my um, Stamping Stars team. So she made this card, but I loved it. And that's why I thought I'd share it with you. Um, so I've done some prep um, and I, that's why I was playing earlier as well. Because look, so there's various ways you can do this background. So we have a base card of white and then we have a thin layer. Well, it's not a thin layer. It's a layer which has just got a thin border around it which is then stuck on so it means that if you if you muck up your base card it doesn't matter because you can just throw this piece away and start again um and so i was sitting there thinking there's a couple of ways you could do this so the first one was i got some um like temporary tape some some low tack tape and i tacked it even less by you know wiping it on my on my jumper and making it even less sticky and i used that to go down there but then i thought these are too too fat i don't like them um, and I did think about cutting this in half and oh, then I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> so if you can be bothered, you could do that. So you could a bit of tape there, tape there, tape there, tape there, down there and down there. And you could do your blending from there. That's one way you could do it. The other way is if you have long post-it notes. Now, I don't have long post-it notes, but you could sit there and mask. I'll do it with little ones. An area like that and you could use your blending brushes and put your blends down and then if you did that you wouldn't get this pink from this section like i did because i didn't cover that bit or this bit in this case so you could just do that and then you could lift it off and then you could go again and you could do it down here so that's another way that you could do it but you would have to get your measurements right so you can't be all a little bit um Oh, I'll just place it there and that. You, you will need to measure. Um, but the other way that I've done it, which may be the more complicated way, is look, I made myself a kind of template stroke mask. So this is just the same size as my base card. Exactly the same size. But I've got my layer that I'm going to do it on, which is slightly smaller. And so that's what I thought would be my easiest way of doing it. And that's why I was playing, as I say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to temporary tape down just a tiny bit so I'm going to keep this straight so this is the card I'm going to do it on which is my layer which is slightly smaller now I can't put it I only need a little bit on um because otherwise I'm gonna go into my squares so I'm gonna just tap that there so that doesn't move and then look you can see I was I was mucking about and I was making sure these were right and all of that oh dear me right oh in fact you know what I wanted to do don't do that because I wanted to make sure that this was in the centre. So, I wanted to stick that there first. Because otherwise I might, have, I might have it on the wonk. So I might have it slightly like that and I wouldn't see from behind. Or from in front, should I say. So I'm putting that. There we go. Oop. Oh. Don't put it on where you've already got the sellotape. Don't put it down that side. There we go, that's it. Then that's pretty much straight, and to be fair, it's not even going to show. There we go. So that's now in place, and I've got that there. And when I put this, I'm going to put it straight. There we go. There we go. So we've got our template, if you like, and I'm going to take even more precautions because I'm just like that. And I'm going to just cover up these bits. I think two will probably do. I don't think I'm going to be that crazy that I'm going to go over here. But you could, again, if you didn't trust yourself. There we go. <laughs> Let's do that. So the colours that I have used for this are for my... Shall I probably put that here? There we go. So the pink is Melon Mambo. You could use Magenta Madness as well. I've used Old Olive, but you could use Granny Apple Green. You could use Pear Pizzazz as well. I've used Highland Heather. You could use Gorgeous Grape or Purple Posy. Um, and I've gone Misty, I've gone Misty Moonlight, so slightly darker. Um, but you could, oh, you could use anything. Um, yeah, but I've used, I've used Misty Moonlight. And I've stamped my snails in black. But let's just do this blending. So you need blending brushes. And I have... Let's have a look. I'm still trying to resist the snails and the hot dog set. But I don't it. <laughs> Ali, don't resist. Your resistance is futile. 
Um, so I have a brush for each one. Now, I use this one for Misty Moonlight and Night of Navy. So basically, I've got kind of one for dark blues, one for light blues, one for dark greens, light greens, one for pinks, one for purples. Um, so I don't have one for every colour. There may be a time that I do, but not right now. So I'm going to take my... Now, first of all, what I do is I have a look at how much ink is still left on there. And you might find that even though you've used it, it depends how intense you want it. I'm a bit of an intense girl. I quite like a nice intense colour rather than soft and pastely. But look, that's, that colour's already coming off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that down. Now, can you see that the, there's light here and it's darker here? So more, it's a more intense here and not so intense there. So in fact, I'm going to go and I start off the paper and I'm just going to go in. And you may not hardly see anything to start with. But as you layer, now I'm not pressing on there, I'm not holding it like that, I'm actually holding it like that, like an electric toothbrush. And I'm just going to go and go, actually that's probably alright for my light. And just keep going and keep going and keep going. But then I'm going to concentrate more in this corner here. So it does depend on whether you're using almost like leftover ink or whether you are using new ink as to how bold and intense this is but if I just keep going la, 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 I'm ignoring that corner now and just making sure it's more intense down here now if I did want some more <laughs> I'm going to regret this I know because this is quite a juicy ink pad there we go I've only taken the tiniest bit but I'm going to just start off again and just go in to make that corner that little bit intense and just that that little framework that looked like a window which you can obviously keep and reuse I think that'll do what do we think I think that'll do right so then we're going to do that again so that I don't get my overlap <coughs> right so misty moonlight next but actually I'm going to check my check my brush first you might use that as it is for the moment especially for the light bit so oh look, I, was going, I was going a bit more in then all right that's la, la, la. and just make sure oh no oops <laughs> don't want that there make sure that um I don't know what I was going to say then make just make sure just make sure Oh, so that was my light. So my lighter corner is there. I'm just going to do it the other corner for a minute. But this isn't, this isn't, it's not enough for me. If you wanted a nice pastel -y bit, it's perfect. But actually, let's just go a little bit more. So I'm just, but I know this is, a lot of my ink pads are really juicy. Look how dark that is. So this, this is my darkest. But I'm, I'm, I'm hardly applying any pressure at all. And have a look at how, constantly moving it so I start off the page and then I'm constantly moving it so I need this bit to be quite a lot darker so I'm now if I want it to be darker I'm gonna you could put your finger on like that or you could grab it either side and you have a little bit more direction and a little bit more force but we certainly want this one to be darker this corner here staying away from that top left I think that'll do what do we think it's up to you up to you kind of how you do it right next one we'll go that way oh I don't know why I decided I needed to do that one not the one that was actually showing right this one is I'm going Highland Heather uh, oh I'm opening my ink pad and I haven't checked my brush first oh this is I don't do purples very often, to be fair. That's why it's quite... Oh, I can't even see anything on that. So, just swiping it. But I'm not dabbing it. And I'm not just going one way, because otherwise it would have ink only on one place. There we go. So that's my lighter bit. This is my darker bit. So I'm starting off there, just to see... Oh, that is quite dark. So, in fact, I've just reduced my pressure. And, in fact... I want to move that up a bit so I don't do what I did on the other bit. Um, so the lightest, lightest, lightest pressure I've got on that. In fact, I'm barely even touching it. 
but then as I come back down, a little bit more pressure. There we go. Just making sure, and then I'll go intense. There we go. And that'll do for that, I think. It's difficult not seeing how intense all the other ones are, but no, I think we're with similar intenseness. <laughs> And then, oh, there we go. Right, then we are in green. Where is my green? There is my green, my old olive. No, there's not a lot on there. So I'll get my old olive ink. And again, I'll just move it around like that. That's why I've got all these pretty colours. And again, so darkest here. So off, then on. But you could, so we have some beautiful dyes that cut out beautiful apertures. Um, I'm thinking of a round one in particular, um, but with, with sort of flowers in and things like that. How beautiful would be to cut out the die, get rid of the die, you don't want to use the bit die cut, um, but you're using the negative as a um, template for this. And give myself an idea. All right, this is... Okay, so I'm gonna go a bit more intense. Stop thinking, do I need a bit more ink? Who's got the blending brushes? Have anyone got any questions about them or anything? Not that I'm an expert by any means. Um, in fact, let's just give a little bit of green to that corner, otherwise it'll have no definition. That'll do. Ooh. I do love them. Right. Look at that. Ta -da! And then, because it's temporary tape, it shouldn't. <laughs> this is where I, yeah, it shouldn't rip my card. But a post it would work as well. No, it's perfect. Now, if you haven't got blending brushes, but you want to achieve a similar look, you could just, what have I got? What have I, uh, I've, got, I've got tape everywhere here. I'm not worried about the back ripping, so I'm not being as gentle with that. Um, so you could just cut four pieces of card out. So if you don't have blending brushes or you don't like the blended look or it's too much of a faff to make a frame, um, you could just cut out four pieces of card and put them like that as well. But that is going to go on our, how pretty is my, <laughs> my mat looking? But there we go. So you'll see all corners there were lighter and all corners there were darker. So we love that. So in fact, I can put that on now. Um, and you know me, got to love a bit of dimension. So my <laughs> ripped to bits back. That I should have been a little bit more careful with. But you know, we're on camera. We haven't got all day. I might just take this. There we go. Ugh. You could use the um, dimensional tape as well, Ooh. which I should use more of because it's easier than picking off all these. Oh. <laughs> Paula, all I've got from you is yeah. I'm not sure what that means. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear, right. So again, I'm making sure that the borders are as equal as can be before I finally stick the, it down. Looks pretty okay. So there we go. So there's my base card. Make sure I've got it on the right way. Um, and so that's that's blending brushes and background done. So these um, snails are actually cut out um, and stamped individually. So let's get rid of all this rubbish. So when I was talking about cutting out my stamp, let's, oh, let's show you with it done. <laughs> let's do a before and after. Oh, you are going to see a bit. So in fact, let's show you the box. So this stamp here, Mr. You've Got Mail, um, the die only cuts out the snail and leaves the You've Got Mail, which we saw last week. Um, and here is the stamp. But look, I've been so naughty because I want a... Oh, you've got mail in the middle, I cut it off. 
Now, you don't need to be as destructive as me if you wanted to. I could have got one of the post-it notes, she says, if I can get one. And I, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You could just mask off the, the stamp that you don't want. You could ink that up and you could do that. And you could absolutely do that if you wanted to. That is one way. Another way is to get a um, one of our Stampin' Right markers. These are pigment um, water-based ink um, so they're different to the blends and I could have just coloured that in and not the snail and I could have stamped it like that and that would be the only bit that came out so that's another way so there's two ways of doing that and the third way is to cut your stamp up <laughs> which is what I did oh, I know I'm so bad but you know sometimes in life you've got to live a little bit um, so yes yeah, so I just did that because when I was fiddling around trying to get this straight so this little die cut here is actually one of the dies um, that goes with. So this die here makes the envelopes, so it makes these envelopes here, this one here. But this middle bit, actually, you so you could pop another bit on the front. I don't think I've done that. Um, but actually, it's just a little cute border as well, a little stitched rectangle border, um, which you can use. Um, so I've just cut one of those out um, and stamped that in black. But the snails, so I will colour a snail. I wasn't going to make all of them. I have made some already. Um, but again, this works for the snail as well. So I've got ink pads and cards and stuff everywhere. <laughs> so use my Memento Black or Tuxedo Black to give it its correct name. It's all a bit juicy in places. Oh, I re-inked it last week. Oh, oh try, to, try and do a better job of that. <laughs> see we don't all do it perfect first time right I'm not worried about um, him being straight or anything so I'm cutting him out that's a bit better and then so I used the let's put them all kind of with their colour so exactly the same so we have so these are our stamping blends they're alcohol based so different from what I just used so that's a stamping right marker you can use those for stamping and for colouring in. So they have a thin tip and a fat tip and you can colour with those as well. Um, or you can do what I've just done with the stamps. Um, or you can, if I'd stamped something in Gorgeous Grape and I'd missed a bit, so like this. <laughs> if this was in Gorgeous Grape, I could just get my marker pen. I don't know if you can see that from there. And just fill in the bits that didn't come out great. So you can just, I don't know if you can make that out, but now I haven't got any gaps. Um, so that's what they're great for, and, but these are great for colouring. Now, you can obviously use watercolour, watercolour pencils, you can use the ink and a water painter, um, you can use blend, but you can use all sorts of things. Um, whatever your preferred medium is. Uh, but what should we colour? We, we'll go purples and greens, we'll do Mr Top Right. So, Highland Heather. Now, I didn't do um, too much blending or anything like that, but, um, uh, 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 right, let's go. Bullet tip end I've used. And just tried to stay on my lines as best I can. So, I'm using the light first. And then whilst I'm trying to stay in the lines, I'm not really bothered about overlapping or anything because one thing with the alcohol these blends alcohol markers is that it doesn't show the um, colouring marks particularly which is pretty cool so that's that and that envelope so this is Highland Heather and this is the light Highland Heather so quite intense but you know as we said I like intense and I'm going to use my dark. So they come in a duo, light and dark, so you can do some shading. And as I say, I'm certainly not the best colourer in the world, um, but I'm trying. <laughs> and I'm learning. Um, so I put a bit of dark under where that flat would be. And to me, if my son is coming. Remember my son? My son is up here and he's coming down this way. So it's going to be a bit of shadow. And again, I'm not too worried about look, what I'm doing. Be a bit along the bottom. And a bit there it's going to be a bit darker i would say in my very <laughs> um, humble opinion so i could do brush end as well but actually i'm not i'm going to stick to my and the more i flood 
this. So now you can see I'm starting to go round in circles a bit more. And I'm trying to flood that dark colour with this light colour to eradicate the line that I made. And again here, I'm not too worried about eradicating the line on the bottom there. And the more layers you put on, it will change the colour, it will intensify. So I'm just making sure it's all the same, I'm giving me double coat of that as well. And as that dries, you will just see a slight shading to him, not much, I don't go mad. <laughs> and again, let's, let's go brush in with my, actually, I am a bit of a bullet end girl to be fair, oh look. So this is Old Olive, but as I say, we've got blends in Granny Apple Green as well. That would look quite cool. Um, but I just went Old Olive. Old Olive's always been my, my, one, my true faithful, <laughs> my true faithful green. So again, a bit of dark. So again, the same, so there'd be a little bit of dark in the bottom of the shell there. I think a bit of dark here and a bit of dark there-ish. So again, just working quickly, just going to go over that, again, flooding that dark. Making sure I colour the whole of it, but flooding again. Now you don't want to lay too much um, ink down because it will um, start going outside the lines. But you'll see... You see, it'll go through. That's quite cool. But that's all I'm going to do. But let's have a little look at the here's some I did earlier. So these slightly darker. So that misty moonlight is quite dark. There we go. So that, that's one like I've just coloured. So you can see there is a bit of shading still left around here, but it's blended and a little bit there. I didn't do a very good job at blending that bit because you can still see it a little bit. But you get the idea. And then, so because I said there is a die, so here's the die. So for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, you're new to card making, you've come across me. This is a die cutting machine. This is a mini version, actually. Um, and it has two rollers in there that just squish things together, basically. Now, this is a die, and that is a cutting blade round there. You don't cut yourself on it, so there's no worries about um, children using it or anything like that, if you're thinking of crafting with children. Um, so they're quite harmless, just making my card a bit thinner as it goes through there. So you always have plates and everything that's cut is between these two plastic plates. So what I do is blade down on the paper, because we want it to cut the paper, um, is put that on there. Now we will have a magnetic plate which will make that stick and not move, but until such times we can get our bit of temporary tape or our post-it note or anything and when we're happy we can just stick that in place and he's not going to move then um, just roll it through and say it's like an old mango I don't know if you can see this like an old mango and I just turn <laughs> turn there we go turn the handle and it's going to go squish sometimes it makes noise there you go a little crack there but I'm not worried I know I've got the right plate so it's all good never force it though um, you may find you've got the wrong plates in and you might break your machine if you do that and you don't want to do that. So just follow the instructions. And look, no faffing around, cutting it out by hand, which is what we like. And as I say, he doesn't cut out the you've got mail bit. Not that I've got that anymore. So it's cute. So that's a die cutting machine and that's dies. So if you hear people and you think, what on earth are they talking about? That's what they're talking about. Right, so bring back in our card base. Got to make sure I get this all around the right way. Now these are flat on, um, so they look like they're blending in with their backgrounds. But I thought I'd raise these ones. So um, let's go Mr. Green. So a couple of little dimensionals on the back. Now I've got to make sure I do them pretty so I'm doing this by eye you could measure if you wanted to make sure my card is straight and we'll go there 
we will go the I'm trying to make sure they're pretty level and he's central because of course it's a he Sid the snail maybe <laughs> and I've gone darker because bearing in mind I've got this to go in the middle here so I'm making sure I don't want to go too high, too low. There we go. It's very cute. So this is the last I'm going to be playing with my snails for the time being. I've done a lot of snails. There we go. Look how cute he is. So the snail is in the opposite corner to their colour. So look, you've got the blue snail opposite the blue background, the purple opposite the purple. Pink, pink, blah, blah, blah. My pink's not too intense, is it? it was all, I think I was being all a little bit um, unnatally there. Um, and then, as I say, so I cut out, just like I did just then the snail, I cut out that little rectangle and then just stamped on him. So I just need a couple of dimensionals on the back of that. You can see I had a, more than one go <laughs> because that's what's good about these things. They have a right side or a practice side and then a real side. <laughs> And there we go. Let's make sure he's as central as he can be and as straight as he can be. That, and our little snail there, is our card for today. So what have we got? Looking good. Thanks, Paula. Katie's playing with the hot dog now. Do you know, I resisted the hot dog. I have to say that I bought the dyes that go with him in a bundle and I didn't buy him, but I've had to buy him since because... Um, Miss Kim Fee has been making too many nice hot dog things with him um, and so I got persuaded as I normally do I get persuaded to buy a lot of things unfortunately <laughs> by other people sharing things but what do we think they're very cute aren't they I don't do cutesy normally it's most unlike me but I have been um, yes yeah, swept up in the whole snail um, snail I don't know what it's called but loving the snails, loving the snails. Um, and as I say, you can go intense, you can go soft and subtle. You can go busy, you can go clean and simple. Whatever you want. But right, has anyone got any questions for me? Otherwise, I think I might leave it. Um, as I said before, I said if you want to find out more about me um, and these cards, because these will be up on the blog later, so the cardmakingacademy.co.uk You'll also be able to get your hands on a PDF with pictures and written instructions. Um, and if you do like anything that you've seen here and you're thinking, I must have those snails, just go to www.natalieoshea.stampinup.net. If you put in snails um, or snail, then the whole product suite will come up. The papers and everything, including the pink and white twine as well. Um, but I say, if you're watching this not live, then I will have updated all the information this afternoon and all the links to all the products will be in the description. But other than that, if that is it, I am going to come back to me and say thank you for joining me this Wednesday on Watch Me Wednesday. Um, and as I say, I will update everything and do everything this afternoon um, and it will be there. And then I will also update, I can't even find, my, my, my desk looks like a bomb site. Um, I can't even find the butterfly cards. Oh, I think it's creeping under there. So if you wanted to see how I made my Mother's Day card, then watch for that video coming this Saturday. Right, that's it. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for joining me again for, fab, for another fabulous Watch Me Wednesday. I'll be back Saturday with a video live again next Wednesday. Until then, enjoy the weather. <laughs> It's just started pouring with rain here. Um, and that's it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.